Welcome back to Anova Speed, everybody. It's Thursday, and you know that means it's video day. This is a really cool one. Um, I get a lot of questions about the independent rear suspension underneath the race truck. That's exactly what this episode is today. It's not quite a how-to install video, but it's a lot of the things that are involved in putting a 2015 up Mustang S550 IRS or independent rear suspension under an OBS Ford truck. I'll go ahead and give you a little spoiler. We don't put the bed on or anything like that today because there's still a lot to do, but you're gonna get to see the process of that and you're gonna get to see a completed, like I would call this V2 of the front suspension. So another big suspension video today. And I'm really, really, really excited to share this with you guys. As always, if you haven't yet, because there's more of you watching these videos than have subscribed, Go down below, hit the subscribe button. It's only getting better from here. I'm getting better at editing. The material in the videos is getting even better and it'll help you guys build your trucks too. And speaking of that, if you want help building your OBS F-Series truck into something that hugs the corners a little bit better than stock, as always, you can go down to the description below, anovaspeed.com, my website where I sell the parts I manufacture. Plenty more coming up soon. And if you want one of these sweet shirts, I know you do, go to one of the links down below as well, which is also on anovaspeed.com if you didn't already know that. But with that said, let's put in some suspension. This is kind of annoying because you're in like weird positions all the time, but you know, obviously it's just got to get done. It ain't no thing. not welded or anything it's just a couple straps a couple pieces of pipe a couple clamps that's it but I thought you guys would like to see this before I wrap up for the evening because it's getting late and I have to actually go to a real day job tomorrow because YouTube ain't full-time in my world ready boom yeah I know it doesn't really look like much because you know there's still the engine hoist thingy in the way and a couple strap pigtails but it's uh it's hanging there show you there's a couple pieces of pipe there that kind of hold everything up I think I did a pretty good job with the fit up it's not like you know absolute perfection but I think it did a pretty good job just kind of notched out some clearance for the arms and same thing here some small gaps but fuck you camera but it's uh it's in at least hanging there man what a what a stance this thing is gonna have look at that so I'm stoked but uh, I gotta wrap it up so oh, here we are uh, I gotta keep going gotta get this thing welded in gotta sit on the ground see what it looks like and we're gonna burn it in right now um, I think I pretty well got it measured out but that you know I'll tack it in a few times check and make sure everything's still straight and then we'll keep on rolling with it. But uh, I already broke a clamp, so that was cool. But here you go, you can see my shenanigans coming together right here. So um, the truck, oh shit, I didn't even tell you guys. So I actually have the truck set way low right now. Let's come up here. It's a wheel and tire just there for purposes of propped up but that's right height so I've set the frame to be um, about six and oh, 
not quite six and three eighths inches off the ground at right height. Um, so under six and a half. The idea there is it should give me plenty of room um, over speed bumps and you know, just anything I'm going to run into on the street. And then obviously, um, well, you can see the, the I'm now taller than the truck. So obviously it's a truck. You know we're asking a lot of it to to track it, but it should be fun. Let's just get to work. Well, that's essentially the process. So um, I've just literally been running back and forth for like the last hour, hour and a half, like moving a little, moving a little, moving a little, you know, just constantly measuring. Because what you're going to get into is um, the biggest issue people have is called thrust angle, which is alignment of the rear axle to the front axle. This should be pretty damn close, as good as I can get it without you know laser aligning and shit. So it should work. But yeah, I'll throw some more welds on here real quick, and then uh, we'll uh, take the crane away and see what we got. I'm nervous. But excited. It's in there by itself. So you can see my angle gauge down there. Anyway, I'll play with this for a minute, double check some measurements, and then, uh, but we gotta do some work up front, so we'll get into that tomorrow in the daylight. Anyway, I just thought you guys would want to kind of see the final steps of the install uh, on the rear. It's not that bad, it's just a lot of measuring, careful cutting, the usual. Several days later. So I've been just kind of doing fiddly stuff for the last couple days. Um, haven't had a ton of time to work on it lately, so that's kind of how it goes, but I'll, um, I guess I'll update you guys kind of on what I've been fiddling with. Rear end that's in, I haven't done anything with that more. It's just, Solidly tacked in, holding itself, that's where we are. God, why am I breathing so hard? It's kind of weird, sorry. There's a wheel. It is not permanently attached. It has literally one lug nut. Oh, God, Shadow, go away. So you can see I've kind of worked on some shit. I got, well, here, let's get in here. This is going to be the upper arm mount. Um, I took, actually, this is the bottom of the factory shock right here and then I made this little plate that moves this over for backspacing clearance to the wheel you can see so this is actually the third iteration of this lower arm right here I had to make it wider with the new rear end whereas before I thought I was gonna go narrower this works out way better and these are perfect so that is the final iteration and can I just say look at that fit up like those are just tacks that's just sitting against it that is flush I'm pretty proud of it anyway this arm back here, the rusty one, that's not the actual tube I'm going to use, I promise. But that's with the joints in place. And the PVC is kind of a simulator just to get some angles. Um, that's going to be essentially what the lower arm's like. That's just not what it is. Um, right now, I'm actually working on this tube. I want it to bend and go like kind of so. So anyway, that was just to get my angle with my handy dandy angle gauge and that's actually what leads me to the point of this little update right here I'm gonna make a bend first bend on my rogue fab bender I apologize it looks really cluttery out here that's kind of how it goes when I work in this area it is what it is this is actually the piece that we're working on oh my god there's a lot of stuff on here anyway so this is a 20 inch piece of inch and a half uh, DOM with a 120 wall and this is actually uh, the part that draws it around I can't remember this specific name but it uses these two bolts to clamp it on the tube here see the split and then there's a pin that goes through this hole on the machine and you'll see me set this up here in a second and then it'll draw it around I guess we can actually slide it in so I've set the clamp six inches back I think that'll work for me the roller there I can't do this one-handed let me set you guys down there you 
go. I'm digging it. See how it fits. If it fits good, we'll make two of these. But obviously this is a little trial and error. There you go, I think that looks freaking awesome. So this whole thing will be scooted over a bit and this will weld to the bottom of the frame. But I think you get the point. Uh, if you're asking why the wheel is turned, I don't know if I mentioned that. I was checking to make sure we had clearance to the back of the arm at full lock, which we do. Uh, and I think this is actually beyond full lock, so we're good there. I need to make another one of these real quick. And then, uh, yeah, so we'll come back to it in a minute, but pretty cool, right? The, well, the, I did some work on the front. It probably looks like way the frig different than you're used to seeing it. And actually right now it is at like full bump travel. But basically what you're looking at here is I have the jack supporting it so I can cycle it and check for bind. Um, but you can see the upper arm is made and in. It was made very similar to the rear. I just made a little bracket that mounts on the uniball sleeve. And then more clevis pins. It's a nice bracket, I gotta be honest, I'm kind of proud of it. But anyway, uh, and then obviously we have the opposite threaded sleeves and then a heim here. By spinning these one way or the other, they extend or retract. Uh, the point of that is directly related to adjusting the camber at the wheel. Uh, you could also adjust the caster a little bit by like, extending this one slightly and retracting that one slightly and it would pull the ball back and vice versa. You can also do that with the adjustable lower arm that I built in. But anyway, the point is we're not adjusting this right now. We have adjustability. A couple things I had changed though. This plate is now mounted on top, not recessed into this um, to get the ball up a little higher, but also because I needed to move it backwards by about a half inch. Also, this frame rail probably looks like ridiculously wide right now. It is. Uh, I had to add a full like, I wanna say it's like an inch and an eighth or so to get myself somewhere to land the, the forward arm. So anyway, I'll show you guys. If I lower it, it comes right down. Ignore the uh, the bumpster kit there, it's not tight. Because it's gotta come on and off and on a few times, but there it comes down. That's like full droop right there. And then if we jack it back up, this takes literally zero effort on my part. So, and then that's about where ride height sits with a wheel. And so as you can see, the upper arm is slightly angled down. That's all about roll center for those of you don't, that don't know. But this is all tacked together pretty solidly. Um, I got to be honest with you, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I think this is going to work uh, really, really well. There's a lot of adjustment built into this, so we can really fine tune this thing as far as I can tell. All right, that's a good place to stop for this week's video. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, if that button is still red down below, don't you dare leave this video until you hit that subscribe button. Now, uh, the reason that's a good place to stop is there's a couple issues with how I had designed the suspension at the spindle side in this video and some other things, but specifically that's kind of the biggest area of Oh God, you're an idiot. You fucked up. Remember, I'm still learning at this point in time. So this is years ago. So next week, we're gonna make some major changes. And that's why you wanna make damn sure you don't miss any more of our videos moving forward. As always, I shoot to post them on Thursday. So far I haven't missed. Let's hope that I can keep the streak alive, but man, is it tough, because this is a busy time of year for us. And I hope to see you guys at one of our four events coming up over the next two months. And if not, keep an eye on us online. Link to Instagram is below, and that's certainly more up-to-date, more real-time. Till next time, guys, thanks for watching.